Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Greetings, greetings, greetings in the name of Jesus. Uh, dear family, good to meet you in this wonderful encounter. I want to welcome you wherever you are tuning in from right now. God bless you. God bless you for coming through. God bless you for coming through. Yes, it is good to have you. Uh, Kenya, so good to have you. God bless you. Um, I received your parcel. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Those that are watching uh, via on Facebook platform, it's good to have you. God bless you. Drop a comment so that I can acknowledge you. Uh, Philip, so good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, everybody that is here, Felicity, God bless you. Uh, my uh, my dear call, so good to have you. God bless you. So let us begin to share. Preacher boy, so good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's go ahead and begin to share. Let us begin to share. Let us begin to share. Share right now. Share right now. Share right now. Share the, the life and uh, share the link with others uh, so that they also can partake in the blessing. Uh, Rose, good morning. Good to have you, dear family. Good to have you. It's a 12 after 12 year Central African time. So I think I believe others are still in the morning, and I believe others are perhaps in the afternoon, just like us. So whichever time soon you are, I just want to say you're welcome and may God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Mm, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh my God. Matlala. So good to see you, dear daughter. Uh, God bless you and God be with you. It's good to see you. Woman of God, thank you so much. Uh, Apostle K, so good to see you. Uh, here, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. I trust you are well, and I trust the man of God as well, and the family as well. Thank you so much for coming through. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much, family. Let's keep on uh, sharing. Let's keep on sharing and tapping on the screen. Those that are watching here on TikTok, tap on the screen and share. Uh, good morning, Olive. God bless you. And those that are watching on Facebook, please make sure you drop a comment so that I can acknowledge you as well as uh, drop the likes and share into the platforms if you can. If you can. It's a wonderful day. It's a good day. And I know that God has something special for us today. He has something for us uh, something special for us today. So what I want you to keep doing is keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing right now. Keep sharing, keep sharing, uh, and let's let's bring as many as we can. Glory to God. Glory to God. I am about to release the word of God today. Thank you so much, woman of God. I'm so glad to hear that you are doing well and that the family is well by the grace of God. Thank you so much. I believe God, by God's grace, will be able to speak soon. Uh, wonderful. Latifa, good morning. Uh, Philip said, my brother, can you pray for my daughter Kelly? She's sick. The enemy can't get to me, but help me now. All right, let me pray uh, for your daughter right now. Philip, as I pray right now, I believe the power of God is going to touch your daughter. That sickness is going. And that sickness is not going to stand. Never a sickness Jesus cannot heal. Never a disease Jesus cannot cure. I pray right now for your daughter. May your daughter receive healing now in the name of Jesus. I command that sickness to leave that pain in your daughter's life right now. To go in Jesus' name. 
I declare the healing power of God over your daughter and I rebuke the devil. The devil is defeated and I command every demon that is attacking your child, attacking your life to be arrested in the name of Jesus. Let that evil spirit be arrested in the name of Jesus. It is done. You are going to tell us good news. You are going to tell us good news, good news, good news, good news is coming. Good news is coming. Let's from where I left on the last encounter. I mentioned this, uh, uh, this, this scripture here. This scripture here. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I mentioned this scripture here. I mentioned this scripture here. Glory to God. I mentioned this scripture here. Um, Romans chapter 4 from verse 17. I want to begin from there. Romans chapter 4 from verse 17. I want to begin from there. As it is written, I have met thee, the father of many nations. Before me, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which are which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations? According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not in weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he is the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving God the glory. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore it is imputed for him for righteousness my god let me read from here and start from here uh tab be so good to to see you god bless you god bless you the bible says here he staggered not at the promise of god my god yes wonderful 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 i take all of this prayer for my father in the law who is having a procedure this morning yes kenya it is done it is done for your father it is done i believe it is done god everybody here as i pray for somebody that is a situation of sickness what the anointing does once the situation is mentioned when i pray the anointing begins to touch everyone that means the anointing begins to heal everybody that is sick doesn't matter i'm not mentioning you by name the anointing is so contagious once you begin to declare healing anyone that is sick begin to experience the virtue of healing that is why that is how the anointing works that is how the anointing works it doesn't wait sometimes for your name to be mentioned that is why you must always have faith the woman of the issue of blood needed not the attention of jesus she understood how the anointing works she understood that you don't need the attention of Jesus. You don't need the attention of the man of God, even if he is not giving you attention, even if he is not mentioning your name. But the fact that there is an anointing upon him, if you make a demand on that anointing, it is going to come on you and address whatever situation you are going through. The Bible says the widow, the woman touched the helm. She said, if I can just touch the helm of the garment of Jesus or the border of the garment of Jesus, I shall be made whole. And the Bible says when she came in the press, she touched and the power of God came out and healed her from a 12-year-old problem. This is a 12-year-old problem that she was healed of. Now I want you to understand something, child of God. It is not how long you have been in that situation. God does not mind. The power of God has no respect of how long that problem has been. The power of God has no respect of how long the situation has been there. All you have to do is to believe. And I want you to know something. In a moment, in a moment, I am talking of a milli, millisecond, your life can change. The power of God can bring a change in your life. There can be a turnaround in your situation. Your story can change. Oh my God. Oh, connected at Mpumalanga. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Do you have a situation right now? Do you have a situation right now? 
Do you have a situation right now? Do you have a condition right now? Do you have an issue right now? Do you have a situation? Do you have an issue right now that you are saying, man of God, there is an issue that is bothering me? Do you have a situation right now that you say, man of God, there is a situation that I'm not happy about? Do you have something that you are facing right now? Is it something that appears to be a mountain? Emily, how are you doing? Bless you. Is it a mountain? Is it a mountain? A mountain is a problem that is seemingly too big to enter. It's a problem that you, when you look at it, you, you wonder who's going to really help me. You wonder, what am I going to do? It's a mountain of a problem. Do you have that situation? Oh my God, 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 God bless you. Good to see you. The Bible says, you shall say to this mountain, you shall say to this mountain, you shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea. And the mountain is going to hear you. The Bible says, whatsoever you shall say. The Bible says, if you believe, verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever believeth shall say to this mountain, if you shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart that those things that you are saying shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. Um, I'm Zat, he said, what? I have a problem of breathing. Please, I'm Zat, listen to me as I'm pre uh, talking to you right now. May the power of God touch you. May the power of God touch your lungs. May the power of God touch your heart and begin to breathe well now. I declare and I decree by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Begin to breathe well. Begin to breathe well. Begin to breathe well right now. And everybody that is sick right now, I command the sickness to leave you. I command the sickness to leave you in the name of Jesus. Let the sickness leave you in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. Going, we read from Romans chapter 4, verse 17. We read from Romans chapter 4, verse 17. But I'm just moving, uh, looking at other scriptures also. Right now, I've been talking about the woman of the issue of blood. That she came in the press. I believe that one is what is my, um, Luke chapter 5. You can find it there. Oh my God. Oh my God. You, you just have to believe that God is ever and you just have to believe that the power of God to his power there is no limit to his anointing there is no limit even time cannot limit God's power time cannot limit God's power time cannot limit God's power time cannot limit the anointing the Bible says Abraham was old and stricken in years old and stricken in years and he he had no child, yet God had spoken about him. God had told him, you are a father of many nations. What I like about Abraham is that God had already pronounced him. God had already declared him to, upon him that you are a father of many nations. God had already spoken, yet Abraham went years without a child, went years without an issue, without fruit of the womb, without any child, yet God had already declared that I have made you a father of many nations. I want you to understand, you need to believe on what God is saying. Believe in what God has said over your life, more than your circumstances. We are fighting the voice of our circumstances. Is the voice of God and the voice of our circumstance. Is the voice of God and the voice of our situation. Your situation right now is speaking to me. And when you look at your situation, there is a communication that is taking place. Your situation is telling you that things are so bad. Your situation is telling you that things are, it, it's falling apart right now. That is what your situation is telling you. You should not listen to the voice of your situation. Listen to what God is saying about you. Listen to what God has said. He has said something about that situation. And even now, God is still saying something in that situation. God is still saying something in that situation you are. Don't focus on your situation. Don't concentrate on your pain and forget to listen to what God is saying. In your pain, God is still saying something. Right in your pain, God is still saying something. So don't let your pain 
disconnect you from the voice of God. Don't let your situation shut your ears. Open your ears. No matter how bad things may be, open your ears. Katlis, how are you? Keep your ears open. Why? Because God is still saying something. Even when it hurts most, don't, be, don't let the emotions cloud your judgment. Don't let the anger, the pain that you are going through make you uh, to be so overwhelmed to a level that you close your ears. Keep your ears open. Even in your pain, God is still saying something. In your pain, in your embarrassment. Someone say, man of God, I have been embarrassed. Someone say, man of God, the embarrassment that I'm facing right now is unbearable. The embarrassment I'm facing right now, it can't be put in words. Everybody looks at me. I'm so embarrassed. I'm in an embarrassing situation. I'm in a humiliating situation. In that embarrassment, God is still saying something. And I want you to understand something. God is never embarrassed by your situation. Jesus is not embarrassed by your situation. He's not embarrassed by your situation. Men can be embarrassed by your situation. Men can look at you and call you names. They can call you names. They can call you names because of what you are going through. They can call you names. Remember, they, 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 they labeled Job a sinner. They labeled him a sinner because of what he had befallen him. The Bible says when they came to see him, the friends that came to talk to Job and comfort him, after all the calamities that had befallen him, they began to reason with Job as if he was a sinner. But Job was an, a man of integrity. The Bible says in the land of Uz, there was no man like him. He was a man that feared God. He was a man that was running away from evil. But all the calamities that came upon him, the friends came to see him. The Bible says they had no, they could not say a word. For seven days they could not say a word. But Jesus is not embarrassed by your situation. They could not speak a word to him because he was going through pain. But Job kept on connected in the time of loss, in the time of sorrow, in the time of rejection. Keep on hearing from God. God is still saying something. God is speaking in that situation. Even when everybody is away, when everybody has left you, that's the time to listen to the voice of God. Because when God wants to speak to you at times, He removes a lot of distractions. Some of these people, God is taking them away from you because they are a distraction. God is removing these people. You are feeling the pain. You are so much in pain because you feel like people are ignoring you. You feel like nobody is taking your call. You feel like nobody is texting you. You feel like nobody is talking to you. It is God's will at times to remove a lot of people from you so that God can have time with you. Let me tell you something, child of God. I saw in the Bible, from the book of Genesis to Revelation, God had an encounter of people, mostly when they were alone. God had encounters with people, mostly when they were alone. I've never seen God having an encounter with people that were a group. I can mention a few uh, examples. For example, the wise men. It is the wise men, they were sitting, looking after their cattle, and the angel appeared. I think that is one of one one in many cases of where a place where God appears to a group of people. But most of the cases, God appeared to an individual. Sometimes when an individual is in a bad position, are you talking of uh, Hagar? Let me talk about Hagar. Let me use pick the example of Hagar. The Bible says Hagar was sent away. Remember, I, I, I don't have time to go into details, but let me just uh, summarize it for you. Hagar was the concubine, or she was the maid to Sarah. And you remember when Abraham was uh, waiting for the promise of God, Sarah could not wait any longer. Sarah lost patience. She said to Abraham, go to my maid, Hagar, and have a child with her, and that child shall be mine. And Abraham obeyed his wife. He went to Hagar, and Hagar conceived. But the Bible says, by and by and by, when Hagar conceived, she started despising a mistress. She started looking down upon Sarah, who had given her husband to her. That was a bad thing. 
Sometimes we, we, we begin to despise people that open the door for us. Sometimes we begin to despise people that have been used by God to bless us. Never allow this in your life. Never despise people that have been used by God to open certain doors for you. The Bible says, Hagar began to look at her mistress, she, to look down upon her because she had conceived. She looked down upon her mistress. Yet her mistress is the one that had permitted this. She started despising her. And the Bible says, Sarah began to treat Hagar badly. Sarah actually didn't want her to stay. And God permitted it. And Hagar was sent away with her child. I'm just summarizing and rushing through. Hagar went into the wilderness. And the Bible says when she was in the wilderness, she looked at the bottle of water and uh, the bread that she was given. The bread was finished. The water was finished. Hagar began to cry. The Bible says she went and threw away the child, away from her. She put the child away from her. She said, I don't want to see the death of the child. The Bible says she cast away the child away and she went and sit. She said, I don't want to see the death of the child. You know, sometimes when things give you problems, surrender them to God. Sometimes give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Why do you keep on holding things to your chest? This is why you are so stressed. Give it up. Leave it. Let go and let God. Let go and let God. Oh, come on, somebody. Tap on the screen. Am I talking to you? Tap on the screen if you are hearing me. Tap on the screen if you are hearing me. Tap on the screen, tap on the screen, and let me see your comments. Tap on the screen. Where are my gifters today? My God, sometimes just surrender it to God. Surrender it to God. Queensland, Australia, Maria, God bless you. Surrender it to God. Give it up to God. Don't bear that burden. Don't bear the burden. Bible says, cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Learn to cast your burdens to him. Don't bear the burdens. Spend the whole day bearing the burden. That is why you begin to feel sick, because the body is not created to bear burdens. The body is created to worship God. The body is created to give God the glory. But if you be a burdens, you are destroying the body. That's why some of you, your shoulders are heavy. Some of you, you have hypertension. Some of you, you have high blood pressure. Some of you, you have ulcer now. Because you are so worried. You are thinking about that issue. You are thinking about that issue. And you keep on thinking about it. You keep on thinking about it. You keep on worrying about it. You keep on worrying about it. Can I tell you something? Worry is not going to change the situation. In any case, worry is going to add to the problems that are already there. Worry is going to add to the problems that are already there. That is why I don't give room to worry. Every time I feel like worry wants to get in me, I get into prayer. There is a time that I pray in the spirit. Let me give you the secret. Praying in the spirit. What is praying in the spirit? Praying in tongues helps you to do away with worry. Sometimes if you feel like worry is, <clears throat> is trying to take hold of you, just begin to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. If it means hours as you pray in tongues, pray in tongues. What are you doing? You are speaking mysteries. You are speaking as you are praying in tongues. You are declaring hidden things. You are declaring the things that are hidden. Pray in tongues. Don't allow worry to settle. Don't allow worry to settle in you. Because if you allow worry to settle in you, you are already paralyzing the power of God in you. Remember, a worried heart cannot experience the move of God. A worried heart cannot experience the power of God. It is the heart of faith that will attract God. It is not worry that attracts God. It's, the, it's faith. It's faith. It's not worry that attracts God. It's faith. We need to have faith in our heart. Yes. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. That's the most way of interceding for yourself and for others. That's the most effective way of interceding. There are days I just wake up and I feel like there is something that is that I need to address in prayer. Sometimes I don't know what it is. How many of you identify with what I'm saying? You just wake up, you feel a burden in your heart. This burden is for you to pray. You feel like I need to address something. You feel like there is something urgent 
that needs to be prayed for. But you can't really pick it. You can't really pick what it is. But you are actually feeling like, I need to pray about something. I need to address something. You can actually feel like something needs to be attended to urgently, but you can't pinpoint it. Katliso is in agreement. That is when you just have to go in prayer. Don't, don't say, I don't know what it is, and you stop praying. Just pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues. Enter in the Spirit. Enter in prayer. Begin to pray in tongues. 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 As you are doing that, I'm telling you, you're going to feel the peace of God taking over. When the peace of God takes over, it means that God has attended to that issue. Maybe after some days, you will discover there was a problem somewhere. And you know that if I had not prayed, the problem could have been worse. If I had not prayed, maybe this thing could have happened. That's how you address issues. I hope I'm talking to you. I hope I'm talking to you. That's how you address issues. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Apostle Paul says, when I'm praying with my, my, my language, that means my, my, my mother language or whatever language I'm using, my mind is fruitful. But when I'm praying with my spirit, my mind is unfruitful. That means my mind does not hear what I'm saying. The Bible says, He who speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh not unto men, but unto God. When you're speaking in tongues, you're not speaking unto men, you're speaking unto God. Of course, of course, others may say, Men of God, so what are what, what, tongues are a language? Tongues are a language given by the Holy Spirit, and it's a very, very broad uh, gift that comes from the Holy Spirit. And some people say, man of God, do I have to interpret every tongue? Listen, it's not every tongue that needs interpretation. Some of the tongues are devotional tongues. That means they are tongues that you use to speak to God. You are simply talking to your God. You are simply praying and talking to your God. And there are tongues that we have to interpret. There are tongues that we have to interpret. What kind of tongues are those? They are called diverse kinds of tongues. That means a tongue that carries a message. When you speak with that tongue, that carries a message. And you need to understand, sometimes God brings a message through diverse kinds of tongues. Through tongues. And those are the tongues that we should interpret. It's not every tongue that we need to interpret. It's not every tongue that we need to interpret. They are tongues that carry the message. Those are the ones that we have to interpret. It is very healthy to spend time praying in tongues. It is very, very healthy to spend time praying in tongues. Normalize praying in tongues for at least, if you can, for at least 15 minutes every day. If you can, go for an hour. But if you can't have that time, at least 15 minutes. Normalize praying in tongues for 15 minutes. You will thank me. Daily make it Make it a must just pray in tongues. Normalize doing that. Why? You are dealing with mysteries. You are dealing with the things that are known, not known to the mind. The things that are not known to the human scope. You are dealing with the hidden agendas of the enemy. When the enemy is planning to destroy you, when you pray in tongues, you are demolishing programs of the enemy, secret programs that the enemy has in place for you. You are breaking demonic snares that are laid ahead of you. I've heard a lot of people saying they were supposed to travel, but they were praying in the spirit. And something just happened. They failed to travel. And after that, they discovered that there was a storm. The place they were going, there was a storm. And the storm killed a lot of people. They realized, oh, it's because I was praying in the spirit. The Lord saved me from death. Some of you, you were supposed to board a plane. And you just something just happened. As you're praying in tongues, these are the things you're addressing. You don't know, but you are dealing with mysteries. You are dealing with things that you can't tell with your mind. But when you pray in tongues, you are dealing with the hidden things. Mysteries, that means things that are not open. Things that are not so open. Things that are hidden. Those are mysteries. Tongues deal with mysteries. Tongues deal with mysteries. And also, tongues are addressing the things in you that you may never know that they are existing in you. Some of the things that are operating in our lives, we may not know. I might not know that there is a problem in me. I might not know that there is a demon that is still causing some problems in my life. But when you pray in tongues, those things are exposed. You begin to have revelation. You begin to know 
there are things that begin to be revealed to you. Certain things begin to be revealed to you. So normalize praying in the spirit. This is why the Bible says, pray in the spirit, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. To pray in the Holy Ghost is to pray in tongues. To pray in tongues given by the Spirit. Don't let anyone confuse you about tongues. There is nothing that needs to be complicated. It's very simple. Someone may say, if you speak in tongues, I should hear it. Tongues are in categories. They are tongues, they are earthly tongues, such as those that happened at Pentecost. There were earthly tongues that were, 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 that were released there. Earthly tongues, I mean, a language that can be traced, a language that can be heard by someone. For example, the people that were there at Pentecost, they said, are these men not Galileans? How come we hear them speak, each one of us, the, the language? They were speaking the languages of the people that, were, that had come to Pentecost. The Bible says people from all over the world, all over the face of the earth, they had come on the day of Pentecost. It was a miraculous gathering. God gathered people miraculously on the day of Pentecost and the power of the Lord was released and the people began to speak in other tongues. Those tongues they spoke with, with uh, in Acts chapter 2, they were earthly tongues earthly tongues tongues that you can hear i remember i read a certain um revival a certain revival about god's generals when the spirit of the lord came upon the assembly a certain lady could not talk in a language but could only speak in chinese and play the organ in chinese for three days that lady could not speak any language she could only speak in Chinese and could only sing in Chinese. And she was a, an organ player playing there. And when you try to talk with her, she could not speak a language. She could speak only Chinese for the next three days. Those are earthly tongues. So God can give you an earthly tongue. He can give you an earthly tongue. You can find yourself speaking Spanish. You have not learned it, but you can be given the grace to speak Spanish at certain times. Because God wants to communicate. You find yourself having the ability to speak uh, French, ability to speak uh, languages that you have never learned. God is able to do that. Are we having something? Are we having something? But I want you to understand something, child of God. There are also tongues of angels. The book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 14 says, Though I speak with tongues of men, and I also speak with tongues of angels. Tongues of angels cannot be heard. By an ordinary man it's only those that are in the spirit make me can understand the language so there are tongues of angels so don't let anyone confuse you telling you that tongues should be known they are unknown tongues yet they mean something yet it's a communication but they are called unknown tongues unknown tongues i pray for you in the name of jesus if god if you have been desiring and you have been desiring all the time, saying, Man of God, I want to receive the gift. I haven't received the gift of speaking in tongues. I see others doing that, and I envy it. I admire it. Let me use the word admire. I admire it. I want it to happen in my life. Let me tell you, speaking in tongues is an equipment. It's, it's, it's a great tool. You can never go into greater depth of the Spirit, greater depth of prayer, without understanding the mystery of tongues, without understanding how to pray in tongues. If you wanna go deeper, deeper in the things of God, you have to know, you have to receive the gift of speaking in tongues. And of course, this gift is given by the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you begin to speak. You don't have to uh, fabricate it. You don't have to create it. It just comes, it just comes. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you find yourself speaking. Can I tell you something? There is, a, there is no one in the Bible that received the Spirit of God and remained silent and remained the same. Everybody that received the Holy Ghost, it's either they began to prophesy, it's either they began to speak the Word of God with boldness, it's either they began to speak with other tongues. Something happened. If the Holy Spirit comes upon you now, something is going to happen. You cannot remain the same. It's either you are going to begin to 
be bold in what you are doing or you are going to begin to see another manifestation, another divine ability that you used not to have. So nobody received the Holy Spirit and remained the same. Apostle Charles, good to see you. God bless you, men of God. Nobody receives the Holy Spirit and remain the same. Nobody. The Bible says, and the disciples received in Acts chapter 4. The Bible says, when they prayed, the place they were was shaken. The place that they were was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, they spoke the word of God with boldness after being filled with the Holy Spirit. The place that they were was shaken by prayer. As they were praying, prayer shakes things. The place was shaken. There was an earthquake. The Bible says the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. So it takes the anointing. It takes the Holy Spirit coming upon somebody for somebody to begin to, uh, to walk in boldness. To walk in boldness, it takes the Holy Spirit, takes the Holy Ghost, takes the Holy Ghost. Some of you here, you've got intimidation. You've got, you, you, you've got, uh, you are timid. You, you are timid. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Apostle. Apostle Charles, God bless you, sir. Some of you, you are suffering from the spirit of timidity. You are timid. Remember what the Bible says in the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. I think it's verse 7. It says what? God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power, love and sound mind. Do you see that? He has given us the spirit of power. So power is a spirit that you receive. You don't just wake up and walking in power. You have to receive the Holy Spirit. There is something that you have to receive. The Holy Ghost, when it comes upon you, power begins to be operate. Power becomes resident in you. Power becomes resident in you. Some of you, you have that power, but you are not, you are not unleashing the power. You don't know how to release it. You don't know how to release the power. It's already new, but you are not seeing the manifestation. But the power is already new. What is left right now is the belief, the faith to bring that power out. I always tell people that the power is there. Our problem is not the power issue. Power is available. Power is available. Our biggest challenge is the belief to release that power and the belief also to receive the power. The belief to receive the power. When the Bible speaks about something that is very, very intriguing, intriguing it says that jesus was in the house of simon the leper jesus was in the house of simon the leper and the bible says the power of god was present to heal them that were there but uh, something that is so worrying is that no record of healing there there's no record of healing yet the bible says the power to heal was present why why is there no record of healing when the power of healing is present it means that somebody may not be a good receiver if you are not a good receiver of the power of God, if you are not a good recipient of the power of God, you will lose many opportunities that God is going to bring. You need to learn how to receive. You need to teach yourself how to receive from God. It's a teaching on, on its own. How to receive from God. How to receive from the anointing. Of course, the first and the foremost thing is to believe. To believe. Bible says, believe your, the Lord your God. You shall be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Meaning to say, you need to believe in the Lord your God. You're going to be established. But for you to prosper, you need to believe the vast cell that God brings. Believe the prophets. Believe the somebody. If you don't believe somebody that is bringing the word to you, that word will not work in your life. That word will not work in your life. That's why the widow of Zarephath, believed the words of Elijah. She believed that Elijah, what he's saying is true. I'm going to obey because what I see Elijah telling me, Elijah told the widow, go and bake a cake for me first. And the widow had told Elijah his situation. The widow had told Elijah, Elijah, look, I'm left with the, the, the little flour and I'm just going to eat this flour and my son and we're going to die. Thank you so much, Apostle Charles. And the widow was very honest to, to, Eli to Elijah. Elijah said, I understand. The flour, the barrel of flour, and the oil shall not end until the rain season. But go and do as I commanded you. Make a cake for me first. Make a cake for me first. That was a, a test. That was as a test to the to the widow. Thank you so much, uh, Dobby. This is a testimony, of course. I'm going to pin it. It's a testimony. 
said thank you very much. I'm grateful for what God to me, did to me through your prayers uh, a week ago. I got a job. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that family. She got a job. She got a job. As we are celebrating Dob's testimony, receive your job. As we are celebrating Dob's testimony, anybody that is job hunting, may you receive a job right now. I am releasing your job in the name of Jesus. I am releasing your job right now. Wherever you are, receive your job in the name of Jesus Christ. You also, you are coming here to testify. You also, you are coming here to give a testimony. If you are not working, receive your job in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive your job in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. The Lord is touching you right now. You are receiving a testimony. You are receiving a testimony. Oh, hallelujah. You are receiving a testimony. Glory to God. Mm. My God. Let us punch it again. Let us uh, pin it again. Listen to me. The only way we receive is by faith. The widow believed the words of Elijah. The widow believed the words of Elijah. That Elijah is a prophet. The widow believed Elijah is a prophet. Whatever he's going to declare, I'm going to believe it. Elijah said, go, make a cake for me first. The woman was being tested. Dobby said, the same day I received the message for interview. What a mighty God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. You also, you are not forgotten. You also, your case is not an exception. You are also receiving God, right, the touch of God right now. If she received a message after the prayer, may you receive that message. I mean the message with good news. I mean the message with invitation for a job, invitation for a contract, invitation for a business. Receive, 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 child of God. Receive in the name of Jesus. The widow believed Elijah, that Elijah was a prophet. And she went and baked the cake and gave Elijah. The Bible says, as Elijah declared, the flour was not finished. The, the, the oil was not finished until the coming of the rain season. She had to believe. She believed God. I want you to believe. I want you to believe, child of God. Believe it's your time. Believe, 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 believe right now. Whatever situation you are, whatever condition you are facing, believe right now. Believe that God can do it. My God. As you are believing right now, I want you to receive your miracle. I want you to receive your breakthrough. I want you to receive your promotion. I want you to receive your marriage. I want you to receive that promotion. Let your ministry begin to expand. Let your career begin to rise. Let your business begin to flourish in the name of Jesus. If you are believing God, receive your marital breakthrough, marital favor, marital favor over your life in the name of Jesus. If you are believing God for financial breakthrough, receive as you are believing in Jesus' mighty name. Oh my God. The power of God is amazing. The power of God is amazing. The power of God is amazing. Receive His touch wherever you are. I have good news for you. I have good news for you. Your situation is not beyond the anointing. I have good news for you. Your situation is not beyond the power of God. Your situation is not beyond the power of Jesus Christ. As I'm talking to you, testimonies are being released in this encounter. Everybody that is under the sound of my voice, the Lord is touching you. The Lord is touching you. He's touching you at the point of your need. The Lord is touching you. He's touching you right now. Don't look at how uh, long you have been in that situation. Don't look at how bad the situation is. I want you to look at what God can do right now. I want you to look at God's ability. Uh, Rose said, my spirit is down. Rose, may your spirit be uplifted. May God uplift your spirit. Rose, I pray for good news to come to your phone. That is going to motivate you. Good news that is going to encourage you. Good news that is going to uh, give you, uh, boost your morale. That good news is coming to your phone in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. The widow believed Elijah. She believed Elijah. And the Bible says, as she believed, she received the miracle. The oil was not finished. The oil was not finished. The, the flower was not finished until the coming of the rain. What a mighty God we serve. Are you talking about provision? Miraculous provision. I pray in the name of Jesus. Receive miraculous provision. Receive miraculous provision. In the name of Jesus. Receive miraculous provision. In Jesus mighty name. Oh glory to God. Thank you Lord Jesus. Begin to receive. 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 Begin to receive right now. It's your time. Don't go out of this place without your miracle. Don't go out of this place without your miracle. I am here to agree with me, to agree with you. I said, begin to receive right now. Begin to receive that money. Begin to receive, begin to receive that compensation. Begin to receive that money you've been waiting for. I'm seeing somebody receiving a lump sum. I'm seeing a lump sum coming to you. I'm seeing a lump sum coming to you. Begin to receive, begin to receive, begin to receive. It's your time to receive. Mighty God bless you. Good to see you. I appreciate God bless you. Begin to receive right now. It's your time to receive. Is it your breakthrough? Is it promotion? Is it marriage? I can see somebody here. You've been praying and say, God, I cry for marriage. Lord, I need to be, I need marriage. Lord, I need marriage. I can see you. You've been fasting about this. This is going to three years right now. Praying about marriage. Fasting about it. Fasting and asking the Lord to intervene. It is your time right now. I brought you good news. The anointing of the Lord is touching you now. And you are going to come back here celebrating. You are going to come back here rejoicing. The Bible says weeping may enjoy for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your time of weeping is over. It is time for you to rejoice. It is time for joy. It is time for joy. It is time for you to celebrate. It is time for you to rejoice. Uh, sunshine, God bless you. It is time for you to ululate. It is time for you to rest because God is a God that brings rest. God is a God that grants rest. He said to Solomon, I love what God said to Solomon. I love what God said to Solomon. The Bible says God gave Solomon rest in every sight. No one rose against him. He gave him rest. He was given rest. That means there was nothing that, he, that was coming against you. God gave him so much protection, divine covering, to an extent that nobody even thought of fighting Solomon. Nobody even thought of trying to go to war to Solomon. The Bible says God gave him rest and gave him peace. When God, gave you, uh, when God gave, gives you rest, uh, you are not going to be worried about the situation. You won't be worried about money. When you are talking about rest, this is what you are talking about. Right now, Everything about your money is giving you stress. When you think about your financial situation, you are stressed. Sheen, God bless you. When you think about your financial situation, you are stressed. You don't feel okay. But when God gives you rest in your finances, you will not need to think about it. You will, you will rest knowing that I am taken care of. You will rest knowing that God has got my back. You will rest knowing that everything I need is taken care of. He supply my, uh, my needs according to His riches and glory. You will rest knowing that if I want money, it is available. If I want something, God provides. If I want something, God gives it to me. You will rest knowing that God has done it. I pray for rest to come to you. Somebody here, receive rest. Somebody here, I say receive rest in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Receive rest in the name of Jesus. I mean rest in your relationship. Some of you here, you don't have rest in your relationship. Some of you, you don't have rest in your marriage. Your marriage has become a war zone. Mighty God bless you. I appreciate. Your marriage has become a war zone. Some of you here, you, you have to delay deliberately to go home. You don't look forward to go home. You don't look forward to going home. Mm. Your dreams are being given back. Uh, Shin, receive back your dreams. You don't look forward to go home. You rather work. You rather be at work than in the house. Why? Because your marriage has become a war zone. There is no peace there. There is no peace. It is uh, issue after issue. 
It's like when you are together, you are not enjoying. You are solving issues. You are solving problems. You know, when the devil wants to really attack people, he will cause them to be always, they are always in a court. Some marriages has become a court ground. It's a court ground. It's a court ground. Every time there are issues to deal with, every time people are dealing, why did you do this? This and that, this and that, this and that, this and that, this and that. It's so straining because you are always in a court. You are always dealing with issues. I pray for rest to come. When the rest come, thank you so much, mighty. God bless you. When the rest come, you look forward to go home. You look forward to see your husband. You look forward to see your wife. You look forward to see your kids. And you look forward to sit down with your family as you are there. Let me tell you, some of you here don't understand that angels don't necessarily move when we pray. Angels move when there is harmony. The Bible says, how good and how pleasant when brethren dwell together in unity. Psalms 133. It says, like the anointing oil that is poured on Aaron's head, that flows down his beard, down his garment, to his feet. It says, there, like the... The, like the, the mount, mountain of, uh, surrounding Jerusalem it said like the Jew of Yemen there the Lord commands a blessing God commands a blessing where there is harmony you know sometimes as a family when you sit down and laugh and exchange kindness and exchange love do you know as you are doing that angels will come they will come and sit with you they will come and be, be there yes they will come some of you think that when you are fasting some people are fasting but they are very very uh, they are not kind. There's a brother that I remember when he's fasting, he'll be so moody, so moody. He's so rough and so moody when he's fasting. That is wrong fasting. That is wrong fasting. You don't have to be moody when you're fasting. Even if the fasting is painful, maybe you're hungry, but don't be mad at people so that you, to show that you're fasting. No, be happy. Show love, show kindness. That is good fasting. Isaiah, God spoke to us through Isaiah. He said, I want to teach you the true fasting. Isaiah taught, taught us the true fasting by the Spirit of God. He said, what is true fasting? It's not putting ashes on your head and on your face, putting on a sad face. That is not fasting. Isaiah said, 